Hi, sis. Hi. Hey, Good family. Morning, beautiful family. Thank you. We're back again for another perfect lesson. It's the last one of the reviews. And our sis has agreed to take this one. I have. I have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was quick. I forgot. Here <laughs> we go. Lesson 220. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. Um, we're, we're going to be reviewing lesson 200. There is no peace except the peace of God. Let me not wander from the way of peace, for I am lost on other roads than this. But let me follow him who leads me home, and peace is certain as the love of God. I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. Interesting that he says here, but let me follow him who leads me home, Holy Spirit, and peace is certain as the love of God. I just want to say here, the reason for that is that the peace of God is the love of God. Mm -hmm. I'm learning that there's no separation between them. Peace is a, a component or a necessary component uh, of, of the love of God. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that, sis? Yeah, I would. I think peace is the, prepa the pre preparing room in our thought. It's the invitation to what is already right there in your mind. So as we allow the mind to return to a state of peace, then the awareness of love, which is there, is available to us. So they're sim it's, it's like one comes before the other, but the experience would be simultaneous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so just to say that there are not different kinds of peace. Right. Okay. The yeah. ego says there are different kinds of peace and there are different reasons or there are different causes for peace. Yeah. Um, the peace of God comes from our commitment to be authentically aligned. Radical self-honesty and accountability for every trigger that we feel. Mm -hmm. That is a necessary uh, component for us to know the peace of God and to know ourself mm -hmm. you know, as innocent, without guilt and blame. Right. So because this, sorry, sis. Yeah. Every trigger that we feel just keeps us cir circling in the gap, right? It's every single trigger is about mythical me, and that's going to keep us imprisoned in this space-time illusion. But this is the only place where peace is, right? Yeah. That's the peace of God. And the way that we reach that is through the forgiveness of the thought that this ever happened. Yeah. Thank you. And I love what he's saying in the beginning of this lesson. I don't mean to cut you off, and I know you're going to go somewhere, but in the, at the beginning of Lesson 200, he just keeps saying, stop seeking, stop seeking, stop thinking that there's something here that's eventually going to pay off for you. Every single road you take that starts with mythical me and what it wants or what it's doing or its goals, he says, every, there is nothing else for you to find except the peace of God unless you seek for misery and pain. This is misery and pain. It will never, ever pay off. Yeah. yeah. That's really, you know, he said, <laughs> that was paraphrasing, but it's right here in black and white. Yeah. And, Stop. Uh, we can safely say, you and I, sis, that we have pretty much exhausted everything in the gap. That's right. I'm sure many of you have done that. Like you've yeah. just gone... To, to so many different extents and levels and achievements and found that there was, it was never satisfying. Yeah. So the basis for the peace of God I have found is an inner consistency. Yeah. To reach that inner consistency, what does that mean? And I think the two components that most help with that is learning to be radically self-honest. Yeah. And the other one is to be accountable mm -hmm. 
for all of our triggers. Right. A lot. Yeah. Just to be accountable, but without self-judgment. Those two are very, very important. And I think that the, the lack of peace that we have comes from our self-deception. And we, we, we deceive ourselves constantly uh, in our relating with our, in our special relationships, mm -hmm. you know, at work, with co-workers or at home, with our significant others, our family, our children. I mean, we are not honest. Mm -hmm. Until we learn to value radical right. self-honesty. So what happens is as we learn to be radically self-honest, we learn then to align what we're thinking, mm -hmm. right. with what we're feeling and what we're saying and doing mm -hmm. and they come into alignment, yeah? Because if we're to really look at how we communicate on an everyday basis with people and not just with people, but with ourselves, yeah you know i mean we're doing it we're dishonest we we you know we say okay i need to do a job or i need to thank somebody for a gift or mm -hmm. whatever whatever but there's but there's this um pushback yeah where's that come i from? don't want to do it right I yeah. don't want, so there's a conflict in there. Mm -hmm. And we don't stay with ourselves long enough to unpack the conflict, to find out who's the one that's in conflict. Could it be my holy self or is it the ego, the mythical me? Mm -hmm. And we don't really do that. Yeah. No, and it's always the ego that's the pushback. And while we're not willing to be radically self-honest and accountable for our experiences and our emotions and what we're saying and doing, we're literally defending the gap. The ego's goddess defending its home and the attraction to death. Sorry, I'm just like always leaping straight to the end there because we need to see it. I want us to see it, that protection of mythical me equals death. That's the, the body and the tombstone. All body identification results in the natural and inevitable result that the body dies. Yes, it's happening in the dream, but this is how the dream works. So, you know, let's, let's not defend the body. Let's not defend the ego and bust it. We're busting an ego. Not, we're not busting a brother. We're not busting our holy self. We're busting this mistaken belief that the ego is what we are. We, 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 want, we want to disidentify from it, dissociate from it. These are not my thoughts. So when I'm, you know, exposing them, I'm not exposing myself. I'm exposing the ego so that it can be forgiven. While I think it's me, then I'm going to feel awkward or embarrassed or angry and, and I want to protect it. I want to hide in the back room. What did we just protect? The gap. That needs to be seen. So, sis, uh, thank you. And I might just give a personal example here because I know personal examples are very helpful. For yeah, they, yeah, we all like people. them. Yeah. Um, when, when my daughter was growing up, uh, I put a lot into our relationship at the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, uh, what I mean by that is that I believe that I was a mother mm -hmm. and that she was my daughter. And through the laws of special relationships, I took on the special mother role for a while. Yeah. So I was able to really entertain my daughter when she was young I was able to spend a lot of time with her and uh, do fun things mm -hmm. that a toddler would love and a youngster would love mm -hmm. and I was a pretty good mother in that area I was able to give my child a lot of stimulation mm -hmm. That's what we do mm -hmm. I was able to teach her how to become a good ego mm -hmm. from the get-go, yeah? 
and I was able to teach her um, how fun the world is <laughs> and how many yummy idols there are in the gap that she could go see. Yeah. Are you with me? I am. Can you identify? Totally. Yeah. Okay. And that's a good thing. That's what the world says. That's a good mom. You know, that's wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and nature, mother nature, mm -hmm. uh, was one of the idols that I really uh, encouraged my daughter to go into and to idolize. That was one of them, <clears throat> which, which to the to the ego, to the spiritual ego, would be, well, that's a good thing. That's yeah. a good thing to encourage a child mm -hmm. to love nature, mother nature, yeah, and to respect mother nature, etc. So I did all of that. That was before, <laughs> before I went through my major undoing with the course. Mm -hmm. So let's speed this up. My daughter presently is around 33 years old and she's got two young children. And the question from her was, will you, as my mother, please give to my children, they're my grandchildren, two grandchildren, what you gave to me? Right? Uh, will, you, will you take them out into nature? Will you do all the fun things, all the rock painting we used to do? Uh, you know, I can't even remember all of the stuff that I, but I kept them, I kept Ricky occupied, you know, during that time. And so she was hoping that I would step into that role of mother, uh, the special role of yeah. sorry, the, grandmother now. The quick ass grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Grandma. And you know, do you know how much angst that gave me? Yeah, I can feel it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I had I had to I had to sit with her, like to make the decision to sit with her and to show up and come clean. And and really and it was teary to explain to her that that, that original role that I played back then, I cannot play it as a grandmother now, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to teach these two young ones who idolize idols in the gap. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it was a big deal. It was really a big deal. And I'm, I'm explaining this because uh, I needed to show up for myself, what I was thinking, what I was feeling, what I was saying and what I was doing all had to be in alignment. I couldn't keep up the farce, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and my daughter knew it. She knew, she accepted what I said and God bless her, really, really embraced it. So much so that now currently she is also aligning her motherhood, her role with attempting to teach these two beautiful children not to idolize too many idols in the gap at this stage, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it and that's coming from me having showed showed up yeah. in radical self honesty with her to tell her where I am at, not to make her wrong, but just to say yeah. this is where I'm at, and and I'm sad that I can't meet her expectations. And through me doing that and us closing the gap. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it was teary, mm -hmm. but there was a closing of the gap. And we did join in truth. And from that now, she's also decided to uh, modify her parenting skills more I hope in alignment can, with the truth. Yeah. I hope she can write about that. I think this is such a big area that's so necessary. Uh, course students that have children or having grandchildren and because we're so different like how does parenting look you know what does it mean to not have a child have so many idols in the gap I mean I know we're not going with toys and goo goo gaga but what does that look like day to day you know how do you pre how do you mindfully be present with this very small child how do you speak to them what does the routine look like 
I think this is a really ripe area. Yeah, I wonder if other people are already talking about this. They probably are. I'm just not aware of it. But Ricky yeah. could be instrumental in this area. I'm going to ask Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> thank you, sis. Um, thank can you. Can I just read a quote? I love my quotes. Yeah. Jesus, in, this is in the manual for teachers, and it's in section four. Jesus uh, speaks about self-honesty here. He says that honesty does not apply only to what you say. The term actually means consistency. There is nothing you say that contradicts what you think or do. No thought opposes any other thought. No act belies your word. And no word lacks agreement with another. Wow, that's consistency. Yeah. Such are the truly honest. At no level are they in conflict with themselves. Mm -hmm. Remember that all conflict comes from being in conflict with ourselves across the board. Right. Therefore, it is impossible for them to be in conflict with anything, or sorry, with anyone mm -hmm. or anything. Right. Yay, that's great news. The peace of mind which the advanced teachers of God experience is largely due to their perfect honesty. There's the connection. Peace yeah. of mind comes from consistency mm -hmm. in perfect honesty, perfect self-honesty. It is only the wish to deceive that makes for war. No one at one with himself can even conceive mm -hmm. of conflict. Conflict is the inevitable result of self-deception. And self-deception is dishonesty. And that is where we get our terrible anxiety that bubbles up. It comes mm -hmm. from that self-dishonesty. Yeah. There is no challenge to a teacher of God. Challenge implies doubt. And the trust on which God's teachers rest Secure makes doubt impossible. Therefore, they can only succeed. In, in this, as in all things, they are honest. They can only succeed because they never do their will alone. They choose for all mankind, for all the world and all things in it, for the unchanging and the unchangeable beyond appearances and for the Son of God and his creator. How could they not succeed? They choose in perfect honesty, sure of their choice as of themselves. There you go. Thanks. Sis. That's, that's where the peace of God comes from. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And to assist in that, there are the seven key principles of authentic relating if you're not already practicing those, they're down below in the notes. Um, probably one of the first few on our list down, probably at the bottom of it now because we've added so much on top of it, but it's there. And uh, no better use of time here in the dream to than to go over and study that and bring our communication in line with these principles. Yep. Um... Hmm. There is no peace except the peace of God because he has one son who cannot make a world in opposition to God's will and to his own which is the same as his. What could he hope to find in such a world? It cannot have reality because it was never created. There's the gap. Is it here that he would seek for peace? Or must he see that, as he looks on it, the world can but deceive? Yet can he learn to look on it another way and find the peace of God? Peace is the bridge which everyone will cross to leave this world behind. Freedom lies within the peace of God. The Father calls, the Son will hear, and that is all there is to what appears to be a world apart from God where bodies have reality. There again, the focus on the body. Today seek no idols. Peace cannot be found in them. The peace of God is ours. 
and only this will we accept and want. And I had written a note here to myself a while back, and it kind of bears repeating that um, all the contractions in our mind, we're always making it about a person or a story or a circumstance. But what the ego is after is the so-called effect that that story has on our mental state. So worry, stress, conflict, anxiety, depression, anger, hatred, etc. Also the so-called positives in the gap, right? Uh, false joy, um, stimulation, so-called all the good in the world that keeps us distracted and thinking that that fleeting pleasure is worth pursuing. We're still in the gap. But the mind is not available. And that's all the ego cares about. If the mind is not available, your body identified, you're in the gap and you're chasing, you know, ghosts or idols that you think are going to pay off. And, but let's just follow the, it back. Remember, everything's at the level of mind and it's the peace of God. The ego knows that should we achieve the peace of God, we're going to feel the love of God and the whole gap is going to be seen as the, the sham and we won't want it. And when you don't want it, it won't seem to be. So peace above all else, make that the priority. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. As you were speaking, I I remembered something. Sure. Which is that the peace of God, of course, rests on our learning to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Yes. But that consistency, which equals communication, is broken when we judge a brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So when we judge a brother, we are immersed in self-deception. And that self-deception equals self-attack. Yeah. Um, and that is why forgiveness is our salvation. Right. Yeah. That's how we get rid of the mental contraction. It's through forgiveness to bring our mind back to peace so that we remember the truth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's why we're only ever forgiving ourself. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, sis. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That was lesson 220. That's it. That's we're done. the end of the reviews. <clears throat> and this is the, I think this is uh, pretty much going to be the beginning of the second half. That's of it. Lessons. We're heading into part two which is so good. I can't wait to read the introduction and what is forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well done. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you back next time to start us off on the intro and what is forgiveness. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks beautiful family. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. Thank you.